piece here, and the band's going to be with me. A little something I like to call Ex Lover Countdown. And it's exactly what you think it is. There's an old mayonnaise jar hiding beneath my bed. Every day I shove bad memories down its throat like my own personal museum of things I can't quite bring myself to forget yet. It's brimming with words I wish I could force back into my mouth. The taste of playground gravel, the smell of police station coffee, that wedding, the ride home from the hospital, the gun, the lens flares, a gun barrel casts in the sun. Dodgeballs. Lots of dodgeballs. Fat kids unite. <laughs> and of course, Romance. Since gone the way of the goldfish. And I like to keep ex-lovers toward the outside of the jar. I watch them as they press their faces against the glass, beat their tiny fists upon its wall, moaning like some twisted ghost of Jacob Marley. You said you were gonna call. I made all these cookies. <laughs> And sometimes, when I'm sure no one is looking, I roll the jar inside my palm and play a little game I like to call X Lover Countdown. And starting us off at number 10, if you didn't know better, you thought I'd take it out a personal ad. Single white male, 21, relatively attractive, I guess kind of, enjoys poetry, seeks female, willing to treat him like shit within the confines of his terminal, largely sexless relationship built on brain alcohol and guilt. Number nine, I had to stop and ask myself, is it a bad sign if you visit her apartment for the first time and there's already a pregnancy test on top of the trash? True story. Number eight, I'd never seen her order steak before. I'd like to thank her for making it clear that this was to be our last meal together. Number seven, who told me that when I put her on a pedestal, it's really easy for her to kick me in the face. Number seven, A, who also said, hey, remember when I slept with your best friend? I wish I had more something witty to say than, I'm sorry, you did what? Number six, had a problem with silence, so she talked the way she smoked, end to end, rambling for hours about absolutely nothing, stopping only to light another cigarette. When she ran out of cigarettes, she turned the stereo up, or burst inexplicably into tears while we kissed. It was here that I learned I do not have a thing for crazy girls. Crazy girls have a thing for this guy. But her stomach, smooth, like apple skin, and I'd graze it with the back of my hand each night before rolling from her tiny bed just before dawn, get dressed hastily in the dark, desperate not to rouse her, though I knew she wasn't sleeping, and I wonder now what might have been if I had stayed until the sun wedged its way past the drapes, would we have found our silence then? Just before I gave my virginity to the first available bidder, number five put on a Rusted Roots album. For those of you who don't know who Rusted Root is, it is the most unsexy shit in the world to fuck to. That's right, I said fuck to. And we ride together like two savage suburban warriors in the dense thicket of the school parking lot. I gather number four mistook me for some sort of superhero. The machine she employed to grind out this town, steal her from a fire escape and fly away. She had a habit of tossing her problems out the window, presuming I'd swoop down to catch them. She soon had a pile in the alley and the neighbors had begun to notice. I must have been afraid of heights back then. Number three, with a bullet. I had a premonition about her once. I've been gut shot and I'm bleeding, crimson staining white sheets spreading the way afternoon sun soaks the bedroom or cellophane at the end of a cigarette. She's trembling, but accomplished and looks forward to missing me. The end is nigh and I'm staring at the ceiling, counting flecks of nicotine embroidered in the paint. The same crack I gazed into when we pretended fucking was more than just a virus befalling us. Number two, I'm sorry. 
just saw her. And number one, for a record 86 straight weeks, is you, curator of this museum. Do you remember when we were in love? Does the thought of it still glare at you from across the room, tapping its foot impatiently? Do you remember kitchens at dawn and running from exploding caps, diving teeth first into frostbitten sheets because our heat never works? There's some kind of adventure, you and I. All of this has been for you. And I've seen you. Under that marquee where we used to meet on Saturdays. That same pink scarf knotted around your neck. Same valances of midnight strewn about your face. Still a quiet exuberance in the way you lean in. Arms and elbows with a new lover kissing like the war just ended. I'm glad that you found your sailor while I was lost at sea. How appealing memory lane can be when you never look down.